City Councilors and Mayor, my name is Sarah Smith. I know that you are trying to find ways to deal with the increased homelessness and substance abuse problems in Las Cruces, and it's important to look closely at what has already been done and whether it is working. An independent journalist lived at the Desert Hope Apart Affordable Homeless Housing Project and has recently self-published a book about his experiences there, in case you haven't seen it. The author, Ital Iman, moved into Desert Hope because he was struggling with finances and housing himself. He didn't move there with the intention of writing about Desert Hope. He was initially very optimistic about living there and said, quote, I was blessed to be a part of the 40 persons to be accepted into this newly refurbished package of charity and hope. I am thankful. Over time, through his experience, he came to have a very different opinion of Desert Hope. Here are some more quotes from his book. Page 61. There is one guy beside me in Unit 118. He has a sign of his hours of operation on his door. He's up most of the night, and there is a constant flow of traffic in and out of his place. He seems to be the king of Desert Hope. Page 62. The man in Unit 118 has broken every law in the agreement of the apartment complex. Are the cameras on? The people in charge have seen the sign on his door and have seen the traffic. Could this guy be selling drugs? The traffic sure looks like it. Page 63, I was awakened to loud voices from 118, then suddenly the noise was outside my window. There were men fighting and using vulgar speech, hitting each other. Page 76, Desert Hope is a very beautiful place, but the people make it the ghetto. Page 80, I opened my door to see a man who had come out of Unit 118 poking a needle into his arm. Page 83, the man in unit 119 was throwing thing against the door in a mad fit. The items were hitting the door with great force. Chairs, pots, pans, anything he could get his hands on. Then he would take it all and throw it outside in front of his unit. Page 83, each and every person here is on some type of drug, fentanyl, and has some profound mental illness. Page 84, the man in Unit 118 gathers wood and does carpenter work 24-7. You can find him hammering, using power tools, even way past midnight, sometimes around 3 a.m. He's beating on walls, playing loud music. Two times a month at least, he clogs up the sewer system, and my shower drain overflows unsanitary water into my unit. The staff seems not to care. The author of this book includes several of the email complaints that he sent to the staff. They were never able to help him or fix the situation. Page 90, this place has become the very pit of hell, full of drugs and drug use, a cesspool of mentally ill persons. Page 126, if the culprits among the tenants here are removed, the coffers would run dry. The units must be full. I was told that and I have experienced that. I have lived here one month short of a year. I have seen drug traffic from unit 118. I have made it known that this unit is the downfall of Desert Hope and the ones in charge are aware of it. They turn a blind eye and a deaf ear. So that was after all the activity in June. This is, you know, just looking here, August, September timeframe is when he's writing this. Now I ask you as the city council, is there anything you can do to fix Desert Hope for the benefit of those who are living there? It is clear that the housing first model does not work for people who have substance abuse and mental health issues. Yet the city council is continuing to use this model and has recently allocated $300,000 to pay rent and property damage expenses to encourage landlords to rent to homeless people and is now asking for $6 million more for affordable housing, which may include more homeless housing projects. This is not working. I urge you to move away from this approach and focus instead on substance abuse and mental health treatment. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else?